Hello, in this lesson we will learn about C++ class templates. I assume that you are already gone through the lesson on function templates. If not, please revise the video lesson on function templates before proceeding with this lesson. Where do we need class templates? Whenever we are implementing any of the data structures, we have a problem. The data structures do not know anything about the type of data stored. For example, if you see an array, it can be an array of int, it can be an array of double, it can be an array of employee, it can be an array of char. If we take a stack, it could be a stack of books, a stack of function calls, a stack of nodes. Here's an example of a binary tree of integers. Here's a binary tree of characters. Here's a binary tree of pointers to strings. So in all these cases, we've seen that the basic data structure is a binary tree. It does not know what kind of things it contains. It can contain virtually any kind of data. All the objects contained in the tree at any given point of time must be of the same type to maintain the validity of the abstract data type of a binary tree. So a class template gives us one good way to define a generic pattern. A class template must contain at least one generic type field and the syntax is very similar to the one we are using for the function templates. That is, we write the usual class. In front of the class, we put the keyword template and we mention the unspecified type T. That unspecified type T can be used inside the code wherever required. Then, when we want an actual object, an actual class, then we instantiate a stack, my stack giving it a type parameter int. So my stack becomes a stack of the type int. So here the class is stack int. Now stack char and stack int are two different members, two different classes and both are members of the container class stack. The actual type of the parameter has to be written with the angular bracket for compiler substitution just like it is done in function templates. Here's an example of the code. We see that this is a stack class with unspecified type t. So we declare an array of type t. We declare a variable of type t here. The function pop returns a value of type t. We declare a temporary variable of type t. And here's a code where we instantiate a stack of float. Now let's look at the code of my stack and let's see how it works. Here's the code stack which we written here. Then here, this is the program main where we inst instantiate a stack of floats, put two values in that and we print it out. We instantiate a stack of int, put two values in that, pop them out and we see the value. Let's run this code g plus plus my stack dot cpp. And it works fine. First of all, it works for the stack of double, then it works for a stack of integers. Similarly, we can write a Q class template where uh, we take an unknown type T and we write the complete code using array based implementation. The insert takes an item of type T, the delete function deletes a value and returns the value and we can do that. Now we can also pass non-type template parameters. The only ones which are allowed are integral parameters that is known at compile time. We can also provide default arguments for both the template and the non-type template parameters. And as usual, only the trailing parameters, that is the last few of the parameters can be default. When you want to provide default for all of them, we must use an empty angle brackets to 
declare an instance so that the compiler knows that the class template is involved. Let's see what it means for us. Here's our uh, stack class which takes a type parameter t, class t, and a non-type parameter size t equal to 10. The non-type parameter is of type size t. And we use them here, the type parameter t and the size t parameter is to declare the size of the array which we will use for storing the stack. Now here, we have called stack empty angle brackets s. This means use the default values for all the unknown parameter. That means this will become a stack of integers with the value of the stack size of 10. So this is same as calling uh, instantiating a stack with these two parameters int and 10. So this is equivalent to that. Next, we are instantiating a stack of double with an unspecified size out here. So for the size, it will use a default value of 10. This is same as instantiating a stack of double of size 10. Please note that we cannot instantiate stack 50 because this is not a trailing parameter. The first parameter is the type T so and the next parameter size. So here we can mention the type and not mention that the size but the reverse is not true. This is uh, in consonance with the usual idea of default parameters being allowed only for the last few arguments of a function call. I hope you enjoyed this very very brief presentation on C++ class templates. If you have any comments or queries please send them to ravipiredi at gmail.com. Thank you very much once again.